Back in 2018, there was a massive struggle going on in the midfield, as we had big battles, for example, for fourth place between Renault and Haas. But all in all, last year, the midfield was miles behind the top three teams, Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull. And that gap for 2019 has to be closed. And in today's pre-season preview of the midfield teams, I'm going to look at what exactly they have to work on for 2019 and what they need to achieve during testing. To know what these teams have to do to close the gap to the top, check out this video. So first let's start with the Enstone based team Renault, who are hoping in 2019 to break away from the midfield and get closer to the top after finishing 4th in the Constructors in 2018. But there is no doubt they have a lot of work to do if they are going to close that gap. But during testing, what do they have to do? Well first and foremost, of course, they have to improve that power unit. Ever since 2014, Renault have had a very weak engine. Especially for a manufacturer who should in this area be doing a lot better. And because it has been five years since these new V6 hybrid rules came in, they have to now finally start making real and serious progress. Because this year, if they don't, are they really ever going to? And they also cannot allow themselves to be overtaken in terms of outright power by Honda. Because that would add insult to injury if that did happen. So please Renault after 5 years actually make a good power unit. Surely for Renault it isn't that hard. They also need to find an overall car improvement compared to last year. Not only of course do they need to improve their power unit but they have to improve their aero. Which in terms of the midfield was actually quite good but it could be a lot better. And it really has to be if they are going to compete at all against Mercedes, Ferrari or Red Bull. For example, last year with the same power unit, they were about a second and a half behind Red Bull and that was pretty much down to chassis and aero. And for a team like Renault, that gap cannot remain or get bigger. They have to really start closing that gap when it comes to the chassis and the aerodynamics. And if they can, then it could be a good 2019, but if they don't, then it isn't going to be as good as it really should. So hopefully for Renault for 2019, there is an overall car improvement. But also make sure to get Daniel Ricciardo's approval of the car. Now you may be thinking, what do I exactly mean by this? What I mean is, get Daniel Ricciardo's confidence going in the new car. Because the last thing you want is the new 2019 Renault to be bad and then Ricardo to be very low when it comes to his confidence. If Ricardo is confident, the whole team is going to be confident. And if the car is good enough, he should be confident. And it is also important that they do please their new star driver. Because Ricardo, of course, is hoping that he hasn't made the wrong decision to go from Red Bull to Renault. So hopefully they can make his move from Red Bull work with a good new car. But for 2019, Renault have to start closing the gap to the top. If they don't start closing that gap, then we have to start asking tough questions. Because from now on, this team now has to start seriously competing. And this is a big year for Renault's development going forward. But now let's move on to McLaren. Who in 2018, despite finishing P6 in the Constructors, it was a disaster. As they were hoping to finish at least P4 in the Constructors, and for most of 2018, they were at the back in terms of pace. And there is absolutely no excuses, McLaren have to improve for 2019, and have to start making progress. But how exactly can they go about that during pre-season testing? Well, they can first start by not building the usual pre-season hype. This has been a massive PR disaster, basically, for McLaren in the last few years. McLaren, during the pre-season, come out saying how great they're going to be and how fast they're going to be. And then once we get to the proper season, they are nowhere to be seen in terms of pace. And they have to stop doing this because if they have too high expectation then that's not going to help the morale of the team if they feel as though they've massively failed. 
and they need to be also a bit more low key during testing. What I mean by that is in testing, don't go out on the track and try to do a headline lap time. Because then if you cannot do those type of lap times compared to your rivals once we get into the proper races, then it is going to look like you've massively failed again. So again, McLaren, do not build this hype train that happens at the same time of year every year. They also need to avoid the poor reliability they had in testing in 2018. Back in 2018, not only did they have problems with the pace of the car, but they had reliability issues, especially with cooling. And that affected the amount of development to the car in terms of aerodynamics because they were having to try and fix this issue. And it even continued into the first weekend of 2018 in Melbourne. They can't allow bad reliability to get in their way yet again. Because if it happens again, they're going to be behind other teams in terms of finding out how quick the car is. So they definitely do have to avoid that. But the last thing for McLaren is make real progress. Even if you're not massively faster in the pecking order compared to 2018, at least be faster in that pecking order than you were in 2018. For example, in 2018, for most of the season, they had the ninth fastest car. So of course for 2019, improve that to maybe 8th fastest or even 7th fastest. And then if you have good enough reliability, maybe you will finish P6 or even P5 in the constructors. But this team has to start making progress because they haven't really made any progress since 2016. And the only reason they made progress that season was because 2015 was such a disaster. So please, McLaren, for all that is holy, make progress. Even if it's small, it's enough. Because honestly, I cannot stand this team to be at the back any longer. And hopefully again for 2019, they do make progress. Because whatever you think of McLaren, we need that name higher up in Formula 1. And hopefully there is some positivity about McLaren during testing for once. But now let's get into, guys, the rest of the midfield. Now, with the rest of the midfield, I'm not going to be as descriptive because there is a lot to go through. But I will list one key area that all the rest of the teams have to work on. So let's start with the team that was once Force India and are now Racing Point, who are hoping in this new era to build something special. But what do they have to do to have a successful first season as Racing Point? Well, for me, they have to have, compared to last year, a normal pre-season testing program. Because basically last year, they turned up with a 2017 car with some 2018 parts. It wasn't really a 2018 car until we got to Australia. And they cannot allow lack of development to hinder them again. Because if that does happen again, I can only see them falling back in the pecking order. And for a team like Racing Point, it is vital that they do have a good testing program when it comes to aerodynamic upgrades. Because teams, for example, like Alfa Romeo and McLaren will be able to bring as many parts as they really want. Racing Point at the moment aren't quite in that privileged position. But as long as they can have a consistent and quiet enough pre-season testing program, then testing should go just about all right for this team. But even though the Force Indian name for 2019 is no more, this team can, even for 2019, go on to be greater things. So don't be surprised if the Racing Point car in testing is a very good one. But now let's move on to Haas, who narrowly missed out on P5 in the Constructors back in 2018. And even though they did miss out on it, it was a very good year for Haas, and was easily their best year in F1 to date. But if they are to maintain that kind of position, what did they have to work on? The biggest thing for me is solving the softer tyre and tyre wear issues that the car had back in 2018. Because whenever we went to a track where there was very soft tyres or the tyre wear was quite bad, for example, like Mexico, the Haas car was really struggling, especially compared to their performances at tracks with not that much tyre wear and tyres that weren't that soft. And this issue, by the way, affected them at races like Monaco, Mexico, and also Canada. And you could argue Singapore. And it is something I do feel requires a bit of work. 
because it's all great being massively quick in qualifying, but if you can't manage your tyres well in a Grand Prix, it's not going to work for you. Teams with bad tyre wear do not move forward in races. They either maintain the positions they do have or go backwards. So they do have to improve on that. And also the track they are testing at in Barcelona is a very good track to test out whether you do have good or bad tyre wear, especially in the final sector of that lap. So they should find out in that area if the car is good or bad. And if they can improve upon that and also bring forward the car in terms of pace and not lose that much pace compared to teams like Alfa Romeo, McLaren and even Racing Point and Renault, then they could have a good enough 2019. That's if their drivers don't blow it. Now let's go on to Alfa Romeo, who are replacing the Sauber name, but it is basically the same team. But they do now have a lot more cash and resources compared to teams like Racing Point and also Haas. And after a very good year of development in 2018, this could be a special 2019 for Alfa Romeo. But what do they have to do to make it a special 2019? Well, it's pretty simple. Use the bigger finances to your advantage. For example, just look at how they developed over 2018. At the start of the season, they had at best the 8th fastest car. And then by the end of 2018, they had the fastest car in the midfield. Now if they can do that as Alfa Romeo Sauber with less cash, imagine what they could do with more cash, not only during the season, but during testing. In terms of bringing new upgrades to the car as testing goes on. And I guess they have kind of used that to their advantage already as they are doing a radical new design for 2019. And if this radical design does work, they could be very, very quick. But as testing goes on, you really should see that team get better and better. And with Kimi Raikkonen at the wheel of the new Alfa Romeo, then 2019 could be a very good year for Alfa. But they do have to be careful as going radical could fail massively just think of the 2013 mclaren for example so hopefully they do have a good testing program now we'll go on to toro rosso who did have an okay 2018 it wasn't great but it wasn't that bad and they're most likely going to have a similar season in 2019 but now the big brother team red bull has the honda power unit like toro rosso did in 2018 what can toro rosso do to help them Well, it's pretty simple. Continue to develop the power unit as testing goes on. Because if Red Bull are having issues when it comes to power output and also reliability, at least they do have a second team to iron these issues out if possible. And that's one thing Honda did not have when they were partners with McLaren from 2015 until 2017. And that really could be a big helping hand to a manufacturer like Honda. But I'll be honest guys, there's not that much to say when it comes to Toro Rosso. As I feel as though this team doesn't really have that much to accomplish in 2019. And with the driver lineup they have and also the car they're probably going to have, I don't see anything special really coming out of Toro Rosso. But maybe during testing I will be surprised. And I do hope I am surprised. But now let's get on to the final team, Williams, who had their worst season ever back in 2018. And if they're going to survive as an independent team going forward, this year has to be an improvement. Not only in terms of pace, but their position in the constructors. But what do they need to do? It's pretty simple. They have to close the gap to the midfield. But not only do they need to close the gap to the midfield, they have to do it by quite a big margin. Because remember, Williams weren't just slightly off the back of the midfield, they were miles off at times. And most of the time, they were a back marker team. And considering that this is Williams, they really have to close the gap to the midfield. It is not good enough for a team like Williams to be at the back. Yes, I know they don't have that much money, but that is not a good enough excuse. Closing the gap to the midfield, even during testing, is imperative. Because if that doesn't happen during testing, then because they don't have the cash to develop the car as much as Alfa Romeo and McLaren do, how are they going to close the gap as the 2019 season goes on? They really, compared to last year, have to start the season great if they have any hope. 
as as 2019 goes on, they're going to get worse and worse. Especially now that Martini for 2019 are no more a sponsor of this great team. So I'm going to be honest guys, if in testing they still have the worst car, then their 2019 is basically over. Because by the time we get to races like Silverstone or even Hungary, they will be even further behind because they don't have enough cash. So Williams, you have to get it right in testing or else it's over. And then you're going to have to start thinking very early about 2020. And you do not want that to happen. But the one thing I want to see from all of these teams during testing is for them to close the gap to the top. It does not have to be massive, but please close the gap. Because last year, the gap between the midfield and the top teams was ridiculously big. And if that gap does close, then that will make the 2019 season a lot more interesting. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget, guys, I will be back tomorrow with the first day of testing review. But until next time, guys, it's been me, Chazra. But until next time, but until next time, guys, it's been me, Chazra HD. Goodbye.